When you look at top level machinists, like top level, like people who can like program, they can full CNC machinists, you know, they can run multiple machines, they can create automation, they can create fixturing, you know, their sheer presence allows an entire floor, all operators, all set of people to rise up, right? To raise their game. When you look at these individuals, these top individuals, they do not get paid enough in our industry. They don't get paid enough, you know? And uh, let, me, let me just like, let me explain a couple things. Like when you, when you think about it, like when I say top level, there's, there's many top level machinists that are in small ponds, right? They've never seen machines do certain things. They've never touched the horsepower. They've never seen the fixturing that allows you to just run incredibly efficient and that allows a company, no matter where they are in existence, to compete in a global market, right? Like, there's a lot of people that don't understand all the variables, but when you actually find a machinist right, that can program, that can make all the things happen, that has an amazing attitude, and they step on that floor and they raise the entire game. They, they take the entire floor to another level. Like, what does that mean? Some of these companies, they make so much money, right? The entire company is built off of manufacturing. And then when you look at the scale and you see the CEOs and you see the vice presidents and then you see the different levels, you see the manufacturing engineers and the mechanical engineers and you see all these different things and stuff. A lot of times the guys who are actually doing the work and programming the machine, they're actually not getting paid, right? They're not getting paid what their worth is. If you look at machining, like you look at a lot of different things, but if you look at machining, there is a million variables. There is a million tools. And to be on that top level, you have to understand what that top level is. You gotta understand the different type of tools. You gotta understand like what's slow and what fast and what's incredibly fast, what's safe, what's consistent. There's so many variables and there's so much opportunity in CNC machining, top level CNC machining. You know, if you look at a picture, and like going out for the major leagues, they all can throw 95 miles an hour. They all can like throw, they can catch, they can hit. The, the, the difference, the margin between the different pitchers is so fine, right? It's, it's so minute. When you look at programmers and CNC machinists in our field, none are exactly the same. Every single one is different based on their experiences, based on where they worked, based on the type of machines that they ran, right? What year the machine is, what, what, you know, what kind of fixed dream they've used, the horsepower, the speed, the everything, right? Like everybody is different. So when you look at the cream of the crop out of all of them and you find the ones that are true gems in this industry, you need to lift these people up right, men or women, like you need to lift them up and you need to pay them and you need to take care of them. But the truth is, the truth is, like we have it like completely backwards because from the top up, you're looking at management and you're looking at college degrees and you're looking at all these different things and, you're, and when it comes to the people on the CNC machines and the ones that are in the room programming them and the ones that are walking, you're not seeing them like you should. Like how many CNC machinists like that program do all that do you know that makes more than six figures? I mean, we're living in a day and age that you can't even take care of a family on six figures, right? Like how many do you know? Somebody might say, well, oh, I know this machinist, this one machinist over here, but very few are gonna know multiple machinists. And yet you look at an entire floor and you look at a hundred machines and you look at an entire manufacturing plant that's doing a hundred million dollars or, or even billions and you look at that top level machinist, instead of like running five parts at a time or one part, they figured out how to actually run 56 parts. They figured out how to run 100 parts, how to make that machine run on its own and dance, right? And run consistently with incredible quality, right? And as they walk the floor, they actually just speak to people 
and, and that very word lifts up those people. They can go from, from one side of the shop, they can listen and they can be, look and they can be like, I hear that drill and we're not pushing it enough. We need to put some pressure on that drill where somebody else is like, oh, it's kind of squealing, it's, it's kind of you know, chattering and stuff. You get the right person, they're gonna come in here, they're gonna actually push it harder. They're gonna get more of a consistent cut and they're gonna get after it, you know what I mean? And, and that experience right there, one guy goes left, one guy goes right. Right makes you money, left makes you lose money. The person that makes you money on a consistent basis that understands they deserve good money. A lot of these big manufacturing companies, you know, they, they look and they got like, you know, you got the CEO, you got the vice presidents, you got all these different things and stuff. But where is the head CNC machinist? You know, how much are they making? If they dictate the pace of all manufacturing, meaning like, I, I already talked about it, like there's so many variables and, and there's so many different things. But when you look at CNC machining, the ones that can actually lift it up, if they're the ones doing it, don't they deserve very good money? You know, a lot of times like we're forcing, like people saying, oh, I can't find like a great machinist. I can't find great machinists. And it's because our trade has forced our great workers, our great programmers, our great machinists to actually leave CNC machining and go into being a manufacturing engineer, being a, you know, an ME, which is awesome. They want to get paid more. And to get paid more, they need to solve bigger problems that are valued at the top. But I would argue and I would say that these big companies need to understand who is affecting the growth of the company? Who is truly affecting their ability to compete in a global market? And that is the person that runs the machines, you know? Like a lot of people look and they're like, oh, we're purchasing technology. We're purchasing mill turns. We're purchasing five axis. We're purchasing, purchasing, purchasing. But they don't understand that the machines don't run on their own. It takes an individual with crazy experience to make that thing run. And as I said earlier, everybody is different. So the ones that can make it run, the ones that can make the company money, the ones that like can make the entire floor lift up, those people deserve the money. And I would challenge like companies, like you got, you know, head people and, and different people, but you keep asking them like, why is manufacturing down? Why are we losing? Why can't we get parts out the door? You know what, straight up, you got the wrong people supervising. You need to have your best machinists, your best programmers, somebody who tests tools today, somebody who understands the game in a way that nobody else does. They need to be the second highest paid person in the entire company. You need to show them that you value this master machinist right here. We're gonna value that person. We're gonna pay them great money. And, and that person's job is basically to go across that floor to read code because a lot of people like they leave the machine shop floor and they, they, they're like, oh, I understand G code, but you get soft after a while. You just, you don't understand certain things that you used to and the tools and the manufacturing and the technology is moving at such an incredible rate. You just can't keep up. So you need to get somebody who's in the game and just making it happen, who's investing time on testing tools and testing everything and, and, and pushing the limits and have that person go from machine to machine to machine and solve problem after problem after problem and change your process for real so that you can actually get that entire shop up and running. Here is the truth. If you put managers over CNC machinists, that don't understand and they talk down to CNC machinists, your entire morale in the company will go down. Machinists respect people from their world that understand the, just the crazy talent that you have to have to actually make these incredible parts. They, they, they wanna talk to somebody who actually understands the code and understands things, that's bringing new things to the table, that's helping efficiency, helping them to make money, helping the entire company to be successful because if the company's successful, they will be successful, right? They wanna be around people like that. They wanna be around like winners in this game, in the game of CNC machining. 
You know, there's so many variables. The, the industry is so big, like I said. Like, show me another industry that has so many different things to learn. And yet so many people, they sit down and they grumble about being on a chair or listening to music or they grumble about, you know, having to come in 15 minutes earlier. They grumble about this and grumble about that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the people that get there early, leave late. They, they, they dedicate their entire lives to making that company money and they don't just say they're good. The production that leaves the floor faster than ever, the production that runs so smoothly and allows the company to make money, that speaks volumes, that speaks for them. You get the right people in your company, you gotta pay them more. Try raising like four or five kids on $100,000. Like we deserve to take vacations. Like machinists deserve to like have holidays and send their kids to private school and do different things, you know? Not the lazy ones, not the ones that don't care, but the ones that dedicate their lives to this trade, to being the best, understanding the variables. They deserve a great life and they deserve to be respected by all companies and, and that's it. I love you guys, I love this trade, I love everyone and uh, I will talk to you guys later, boom.